Good evening, and welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm your host, John Ronan, and during my half-hour interviews, I talk to writers and sometimes other artists about their craft, what they're working on, what they've accomplished, what they're going to do in the future. We talk to writers primarily, but not only writers. Other artists, too, have been on the show, musicians, actors, sculptors. It's a pretty wide net. If you have an idea for someone who might be good for the show, a writer or other brand of artist, watch for our address at the end of the show. We'd be glad to hear your suggestions. Another comment I'd like to make is that KPN TV is very proud of the Writer's Block and all the other original programming that comes out for KPN on behalf of KPN Cable Television. That's cable television, not DISH. So don't be tempted away by DISH ads. This is a very important cultural institution right here, KPN TV, and I hope you can continue to support it. I'm very happy to say tonight we do have a writer, although she's a multi-talented artist as well. Her name is Georgelina Zioli, and she is, among other things, a Tai Chi instructor, a piano teacher, a singing uh, a teacher, and a prolific writer who's focused on her overcoming different traumas in her life. She's in the process of overcoming one right now, uh, these last couple of years. And I'm anxious to talk to her about all of these activities and her experiences. George Alina, welcome to the Writer's Block. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I mentioned before the show, I was going to start out by asking where you find time to do all these things that you do. Well, I don't do them all at the same time. I do one thing, then that goes down, and then I start another activity. So this is the work of many years. Um, I used to be a church musician since I was a teenager, and now I have needed to put that behind for a while because I have a concussion from a car accident. So right now I'm moving very slowly. Having moved slowly, however, I was able to publish these four pieces with concussion and everything. And I have been able to open a Tai Chi studio in my own bookstore. So, well, okay, where is your bookstore? In Essex on Route 133. And it's limited hours. So people can call me, could be by appointment as well. Now, we will show your website on the screen, but you mentioned, you could mention it. Now, verbally, just to give My everybody website, a heads up. My website is um, georgelinazioli.com. Georgelinazioli.com, yes. J-O-R-G-E-L-I-N-A-Z-E-O-L-I.com. Now, I didn't mention, before we get to the books, I didn't mention earlier, you were born in Manhattan. I was born in Manhattan. And but then you were raised in Argentina. Correct. And came back, obviously, right. to the United States. Can you just summarize very briefly how you got from Manhattan to Argentina? <laughs> it's a long ways away, and then back to the States. Well, my father, um, he had a scholarship to study organ at the Juilliard School of Music. Ah. And my mother was working for the United Nations. So when they were here, I was born here, but they were from Argentina. So we went back and then the military regime came and my mother was very strong at, about getting me out of the country because it was horrible to be there. That's one of the topics that I cover here. Um, the trauma of be living under military violence, the flashbacks, the horror, and how I have found my way out of that. I don't have those flashbacks anymore. Um, so I came back in 1979 with a scholarship to study at the New England Conservatory of Music to study organ. So you followed in your father's Following my father's first. steps, yes. I had actually started a recital career in Argentina, and I thought I would continue that here. But I was very traumatized, not only by the military violence, but childhood trauma, childhood losses, dysfunctional family, you name it, a long list. Of, of 
traumas that happen to millions of people. So when I finished school, I, I was immobilized. I couldn't, I couldn't function. I, I didn't have what it took to make a career. So eventually I ended up in psychotherapy for decades. And it was a very fascinating process to learn to know myself, to learn what I felt, what I had inside, to learn about my thinking processes. Um, and I tried many modalities, many healing modalities, but I was really stuck. I, I, was, I was very unhappy. I was in emotional pain constantly. And eventually, I went into a pretty intense uh, spiritual experience, journey. And it was only then that I was able to pull myself out. And it has been a miraculous journey because I have never taken medications. And through this integration of psychologic, psychological processes and spiritual processes, I got myself out of the suffering. I, it's not that I don't suffer anymore, but I'm not in the suffering and the constant suffering anymore. Mm -hmm. I have found a place where I feel peace, where I feel contentment. Um, so it, it's been pretty so, amazing. So is it, yes. do, do you visit Argentina? Or would that I be don't too anymore. Yeah. Hmm? I, and, I, and, and, I haven't seen the accident, I just, I cannot uh, do it. Someday you're, you're, you're a citizen, or do, are you dual? I was, no, dual? there's no dual citizenship. I, I couldn't do both, so I had to choose, and so I chose to be American. Well, you're born in Manhattan. I was born you here, so Can't yes. be more American than Manhattan. No, huh? no, you can't. Well, that's a fascinating background, and you've brought some of the books that you referred to that you wrote as part of your process and trying to share that process. So right. can you tell us about some of those? Um, yes, well. And we can hold those up. We can now, I'll, I'll put some of these some of these up. And where, where are these available? Your bookstore on 133. My bookstore and on my website. And that's that. That's where on 133 is it? Uh, it's 121 Eastern Avenue, and it's right above uh, Schooner's Market, where the pet supply store is. The pet supply There's store. There's a pet supply store, and right next to it is 121. And there's a huge sign that says Tai Chi Studio. You cannot miss it. Okay. Tai Chi right. Studio, black and white, huge. Okay, I will look for that. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, I can give you a summary. This is the, these are the first books. This is the flashback series. The first one is uh, Childhood Trauma. The second one is My Life in Argentina. Uh, is My Life in Argentina as a Young Woman. Relationship with my parents, how dysfunctional family. Part three is my first year here in the United States and all the trauma that I brought when I first came um, about military violence, among other things. The fourth one is my next year in the States and the relationship with my mother, who was an extraordinary woman. She was also psychotic. So these kind of topics, sometimes people don't speak openly about it. And well, they, they avoid them often, I think. Right, because it's very painful, but there's also a stigma. I, Go ahead. I, I marked yes. one passage in sure. the first book, which you sent me. These are written under the pseudonym Fiery J. Uh, I, I like the name. Uh, this is uh, because you mentioned trauma in the books and right. in your conversation. Right. Uh, this is a flashback from Argentina in the mid-50s. With my daddy on the way to my grandmother's, don't leave me, don't leave me, I won't, he said, and he left me. That's very stark, very, uh, very affecting. Right, and that goes actually with drawings. My books have drawings by my inner child. And what you just read 
is followed by, I don't know where I'm supposed to put the book. Here, um, let, me, let me hold it. But I'll hold that up. We don't have a monitor. I'm going to hope that uh, someone so can catch that. That is um, when my father left and cut the cord. He cut the cord. Is, is, that, is that good? Okay. So that was one of many. Should I read another one? Sure. Please. Um, so my mother wasn't well, so she was in the hospital a lot. So I didn't have a, st a stable home or parents. Um, a child in terror, the terror of being abandoned yet again. Then opits came into our lives and made a home for us. My mother, always frail, he took care of her and he adored me. Opitz fed me, he played with me, he taught me songs and told me stories. He took care of me when I was sick and carried me on his shoulders when I was tired. And there are all these drawings also of how he took care of me. Opitz conquered my heart. The fear subsided. I was able to trust again. And one morning he was gone. A month later, he was found dead, frozen in the snow on the nearby mountain. And this is another drawing. I see. So, so, tell me, I want to ask our camera. Is that good? Can you? Can you? Is that? Are you picking that up, John? Yeah, you are. So there were many major losses separated from everyone that I love. I was separated from my sister as well. Is she still there or is she here? She, she died. Ah. She died, yes. So what I believe is unique about my books, I believe this is unique, is that I tell my story, I tell the tragedy, but I intertwine it with the sessions with my psychotherapist that bring understanding of what was happening, what had happened to me. And I also uh, intertwine it with conversations between my inner child and God. And um, uh, this, uh, yes. On. Let me just uh, ask you to give uh, our audience just a little bit of background. Yes. On who was in power and the years of that dictatorship? Uh, there was a uh, military junta, so I don't remember names. <laughs> there are many things I don't remember, but there was a military junta. And how long were they in power? Uh, I don't know, six, seven years. I, there's a lot that I have forgotten. Yes. So um, I can't remember the principal member's uh, leader's name either, although I've read some horrible articles about him. But... Our audience can look that up. Yes, yes. Um, so, would you like me to go on with? Yes, please. The, so, um, this is what I need to say. In nineteen, no, in two thousand and three, my life was just pieces. I didn't have enough work. I didn't have a job. Uh, my mother had Alzheimer's. I was alone taking care of her. And I was having all these flashbacks. I was writing my memories. And um, I was suicidal. I was suicidal. And as I was writing all these memories, this voice started coming in, making jokes. I mean, in the writing, through the writing. There, was, there were conversations coming up that made me laugh. And I went with it because I thought it was just a creative process. This is like automatic writing? Somebody was writing through you, do yeah, you think? Yeah, exactly. And th there were conversations. And they were very funny conversations. And so this happened for months and years. And so I was like living in two worlds. There was this fantasy world in which these two showed up. Okay. This was my magical world. There was a little girl talking through me, and there was a puffy creature who eventually I called God. 
and and they were just uh, they were writing through the pen i was just writing what these guys were saying and so i had a magical world and the world of my memories and i would shift back and forth and when i was in my magical world i would feel comfort and i would laugh and play the way i never played when i was a child so a big part of my healing journey happened through writing and through connecting with the young part of me that could not uh, exist when I was little because I was just in terror and I was completely shut down. So I lost track of where we were now, <laughs> what well, we were saying. Well, you're saying how the tra trauma developed and how you dealt with it through through the the years because we were, we were talking about your father originally, but then expanding that through... Uh, through your youth in Argentina. Right, so it was an accumulation of traumas in Argentina. When I came here, there was a new stage in which all the pain started just exploding. And I ended up in therapy, and then therapy wasn't enough, and I would not take medications. And then through writing, these two showed up, a magical world showed up through my pen. And through this create, creative process, um, I have called this creature God because it literally pulled me out, going into this world, pulled me out of my suicidal impulses. Uh, do you think writing itself, would you recommend to say our audience has uh, emotional problems or issues they're dealing with? Do you recommend writing as a therapeutic technique? Writing is very important, but there are many different pieces and it's going to be telling the, the story is important, but there needs to be the intention of finding the way out because telling the story over and over can re-traumatize. I got re-traumatized and it's very dangerous. So just going around in circles. Right, so, going in circles yeah. is no good, but telling the story and grieving daring to feel the pain, the rage, daring to feel it, and, and not alone. I mean, I do it alone now because I, I did it for many years, but if the pain is severe, look for professional help and support. But besides that support, what I have found, and I speak about it in this, in this most recent piece, The Way Out, yeah, yeah, part right. One, part two. Right. What I have found is that deep within, I believe this is true for everyone. I don't think I'm different from anyone. But very deep within, there is a source of guidance. Some people call it the voice within, or intuition, or gut feeling. There is a wisdom there that I took very seriously and I experimented listening to it and following it. And that guidance, uh, I believe people who meditate go into those deeper places of one's being. That these are places that I believe can only be found if one takes time away from all the noise and all the activities and being busy, calm down and breathe deep and explore the inner world. So, so if I understand you rightly, you're saying if you, if you explore, and one of the re ways you may explore is writing, uh, uh, you explore your subconscious. Right. And you, and you don't necessarily, in a traditional way, identify contact as God, but you can use the word, if you like, and right. explore what freedoms and healing is there. So in a very not dogmatic way, no. but exploratory and accepting way. Right. The word God is very charged and people give it different meanings. I use it, but it's my own meaning. I mean, I don't think, I don't know if anyone else has called Mr. Plath God. And I was thinking if I were here and I had no name, I would still be here. For me, there's a, there's a real experience, something more than my psychological processes. There is something else. Whatever word we give to name it is not important. What matters to me is what I experience. And what I have experienced 
uh, for, for the longest time, I believed that I was my pain. That, that's, that was all of me, pain 24-7. And now, the way I envision it is I have like a bag inside where all this, uh, the fear, pain, etc., is in that bag. But I am much more than that. And so I can live my life in a different place that feels peaceful and comforting, which I found through the writing. And not just through the writing, I did a lot of studies. I read um, spirituality, all kinds of religions, absorbing what my heart was needing. So all all kinds of religions. All kinds of religions. Because they they, they all, in some ways, point in the same directions. so right. I, I wanted to go back and ask you a technical question. Sure. You mentioned a couple of times that you did not use any medications. Right. Now, is that, was that a f- because it, you didn't think they would apply to you, or do you not, in principle, like uh, chemical intrusions? Well, that's part of it. Um, but th- there was a history of my family of tragedy due to wrong medication. And um, Mm. I felt I cannot do it. I know medication helps some people, but I was also, I I am very sensitive. And the times I would feel better was when I connected with my music, Mm. with my creativity. And I was afraid that if I took medications, I would become numb. I don't know I, if that would happen. I, but I've I, heard people say that they didn't want to take medications. Or they, poets who didn't want to go on antidepressants because they thought if they weren't depressed, they weren't going to write well anymore. That's uh, right. Now, the, the, your, your music, you said you, you escape and enjoy your music. Do you, do you still sing? Do you still play? Uh, I specialized in the development of church music programs, so I used to play the organ in churches and direct choirs and sing and play. And that part of my life right now, I, it, it may be gone. I don't know. For good, you think? Yeah. I, I don't know. I am at a time where I, I need to keep music in my life, but I need to find other ways. I cannot, I have difficulty right now to deal with the um, contradictions in churches. There's a lot of contradiction going on at least that's my perception after decades of working in churches. Um, the contradict I mean, I have found the most wonderful people in churches. They do very good work, but all the politics that go there and the, the hierarchies, the power, the human power that my experience of spirituality is the gentlest thing. There's no power involved. You know, it's, it's just tenderness and trust and compassion and forgiveness. There's no power, no human power. It's a different power. So how to put that mean. power together with this human structure? I have seen too many contradictions. And well, for, I think the politics in large church organizations rivals any politics in Washington or any place else. Uh, do, do, but do you miss the music itself? I do. I do. Badly. There, there aren't many organs around outside of churches. Right. But I'm very creative and I'm going to find a way of maybe I won't play the organ. But I wrote a collection of songs and actually m- most of them, the lyrics are here. And this is inspirational poems for a new earth. So I can speak freely about my spirituality, which I couldn't do inside the church, because I don't fit in any box, John. I just follow what is true to my heart, and I cannot be in a box. So when it comes to spirituality, now I'm free to express what I need to express. and. For me, this higher energy, this higher reality runs through every single human being. And it is a choice for people. And it depends on their circumstances to look for that, which is tangible. It's tangible. It's not something to believe in. 
Now, yes. I want to ask you, because you use writing and other tools to yes. overcome very serious trauma and yes. different problems. If we have viewers who have who are watching the show because they're interested in writing, right. and they're trying to overcome different problems or different anxieties or different traumas, right. how would you advise them to write, and how would you advise them to publish what they've written? <laughs> well, um, I have self-published everything, and everything is imperfect. And up to very recently, I felt crushed by the book industry because the normal path, the normal path is the publisher, the agent, the perfect cover, a lot of money because publishers usually charge you. And I was feeling very, because I'm traumatized, I don't function well on the internet or in the world. And I felt, I know there's a very valuable message here and I, I, can't, I can't do it. So, and then I said, well, I'll be my own publisher and I'll be my own bookstore and it doesn't need to be perfect. And whoever sure. cares about this material will not care that there are typos and things sometimes are not. So you, you, you put your book together and then you get a printer? I went then, to a printer. Yes. Well, I know, learned. I learned to do the formatting, and so, so maybe this is a way people could drop into your bookstore in Essex on one thirty-three if they want to learn more about your writing and or how to write to overcome their own problems or publish. They could ask you. Well, they could ask me. I just don't know how good I am because I am not a successful writing. I mean writer. My books are not getting out there. Maybe they will. I'm hoping they will. But I cannot tell them how to be successful. Yeah. I can tell them to be true to themselves. To, true to themselves. That's true the to themselves. And I have, yes. excuse me, I have to, we're, we're almost out of time. Yes. I have to begin to, yes. if you could say in one sentence of advice to any viewer who's trying to overcome trauma, just in a sentence or two, what would you advise them? Never give up hope. When you are giving up, take time to rest and bounce back and know that there is a way out of the suffering. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Georgiolina Zioli. I want to thank not only Georgiolina Zioli for being with us here tonight and sharing her means of escaping trauma and finding some joy and recovery through writing and other venues. But I want to thank you for being with us and listening to Georgelina explain her work. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this half hour. And I hope to see you again next week on the Writer's Block. Good night.